Good morning. Good morning. And it's Morning Devos with Pastor Jen. And I'm so excited this week because I have one of my very good and best friends joining us all week long on Morning Devos. So everybody say hi to Jared Clark. Uh, He is now I'm going to get the title wrong, but I like to call you as the executive pastor at Calvary Temple. That that is actually the official title now. Yes. So yes, my dear friend, Jared, is going to be joining us all week long. And I have, uh, we have been doing ministry together for almost 20 years, I think 18 years total since 2002. Isn't that scary? I don't feel like I'm old enough to have done ministry for that long with anybody, but I guess I am. (laughs) So it has just been such a joy and delight over the past 18 years uh, to not only do ministry together, but also to become very good friends and uh, to to be a part of your wedding and then with your kids and going on vacation and doing summer camp ministry. And uh, I just thought, what better way to end off 2020 than with just a series of conversations and reflections on the year. And uh, so, Jared, I'm so glad that you could join us this week. Thanks. I mean, we need to have Jared and Jen time. That's what we've always called it. And so we're going to let the world into our conversation. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a good time. I just, I want everybody to just strap on your seatbelts. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen, right? Like, you never know. And so one of the f- first things uh, that we wanted uh, to talk about is the fact that 2020 is not what we expected. Right. Like, no, re- remember when we used to make jokes about how 2020 would all, all be about like bad dad jokes of like vision and hindsight and how like that was going to be the, the story of the years. How many bad pastor jokes would be about 2020 vision. And now it's like there is no vision. Right. We're just trying to get through one day to the next day to the next day because everything is constantly changing. And uh, just as soon as we thought, okay, okay, it can't possibly get any worse than that, then something new would come up and we're like, (laughs) how do we deal with this? And so uh, Jared and I have had many conversations over the past uh, eight months, nine months, almost 10 months now about, okay, what is your church doing? Okay, what is your church doing? How how do we deal with this? How do we um, walk our people through this? How do we, you know, continue to help people connect with God? And, and at the end of the day, that's the question um, why we continue, I continue to do morning devos is, is just giving you guys an opportunity uh, to um, connect with each other and have a little encouragement every morning just to start off. OK, let's refocus uh, today. And I feel like this week of our time together very much will be OK. Let's just refocus from the year, what are some things that we want to hold on to going into 2021 and what are some things we just need to to let go of and let them stay in 2020. Yeah. And I think like any challenging situation in life, it's important to sort of think about what we've learned. Like what has 2020 taught us? Um, you know, we always say as pastors or, or maybe, it, maybe it's just me, but I pray that God would bring people the easiest way possible. Hmm. Right. I don't want to have to relearn the lessons of 2020 later on, you know, like, I want to do this the easiest way possible because I think there's some real lessons that God is asking us as a nation, as people to learn uh, through this. And and I don't want to do it again. You know, if that makes sense. Uh, One 2020 is enough for me. I totally agree. And I think one of the lessons that we have learned uh, that I know I have learned this year is listening. And I have Um, gone into so many conversations where I have thought one thing and then as you sit and listen and you hear the other person's perspective you're like oh I, I I didn't know that's what you were thinking or the or what issues you had to work through in order to get to this perspective and and so many times I have caught myself thinking one thing and then been challenged and was like oh Jen you jumped to a conclusion and you could have just totally wrecked that entire situation if you had continued, you know, thinking along that line with respect to that individual. 
Yeah, I think there's this trend, right, with the media, with everything that's going on, that, like, we polarize everything right now, right? You're either pro-Trump or anti-Trump. You're either pro-mask or anti-mask, you know, pro-choice, you know, like, all of these things, it's either one or the other. There's no middle ground right now. It seems like everything is framed uh, in camps. And so, you know, even with the, the, the Black Lives Matter, so all these things, it's either you're either a racist or, or you're not. And they're like, there's it's and yet all of us, like if we're really honest, probably have a whole varying degree of views on these issues. But it's either one or the other. And, and I think that's a problem. Right. And and it comes to that understanding of of trying to actually put yourself in the other person's shoes. What context are they seeing the world from? Yeah. And, and as we actually listen to them, we learn something. And so I think this is one of the major lessons of 2020 is we got to get off our own camp. We, we actually have to come to neutral ground to find out what the person is really about. Yes. And how do we do that? How do we learn? I mean, you know, like I, we laugh about this because our whole friendship started with a fight. It's true. You know, and... and and, and it's because you were judging me. <laughs> okay, maybe my circumstance a little bit. And literally you were a judge because it was a cabin cleanup competition, which you were the judge of. So there's a little bit of extremeness in my telling of the story here, but people will like that. So <laughs> we're at Circle Square Ranch. It's summer 2002. And I'm in the bakery with my group of boys. They're really working hard on cabin cleanup. And you took a half a point away from me. We did not get a 10 one day. And this, like, I am ultra competitive. Like, I want to win at all costs. And so you took half a point away from us because I had too much stuff in my room. Not because it was messy. Not because it was out of line. It was all neatly there. But I had too much stuff. And I, I was, like, upset. And so I challenged you on it and I challenged you on it pretty hard. And, and I feel bad even saying this, but what you said to me that day, I, like it just, it's there. And it was, well, it's not like you have to bring all of your stuff to camp. It's not and, like you live out of your ca- your car, Jared. <laughs> like what's wrong with you? Like I was actually, because the thing is, he was challenging me. And so when I get challenged, my back goes up and I know you're all like, Oh, pastor Jen, you're so nice. I'm like, God has sanctified me over the last 18 years. You have softened. (laughs) And so he challenged me. And so I immediately came back and, and it was not kind. It's not as if you have to live out of your car, like, come on. And he said, uh, actually I do. Everything I own, like, this is my home. Um, And then Jen started to cry, and then I probably started to cry, but I won't confirm nor deny that here today. (laughs) And for the reason that Jared was living out of his car is because he had come from some difficult circumstances with his his, uh, home family and being at school, and so he literally was living out of his car because he needed to live out of his car. But that was not my perspective. Uh, That was not my understanding. So I came with this understanding of, well, he's probably coming from a good home. Of course, he, you know, he can drive back and forth. And so I made all my preconceived ideas. And then when I'm actually confronted with the truth, I need to sit back and go, okay, Jen, what are you going to do with the truth? Right. And at that point, my heart did break because I realized I was I was making a judgment, a call on something that I had absolutely no experience with or understanding or hadn't even sought understanding in. Yeah. And I think that's the big thing. Right. Like, do we actually seek understanding? Right. It is so much easier to look at a situation with the lens of our own life. And our experience, because that's all we have, right? We have our own experiences. And so it's natural for us to look at a situation with that lens and go, okay, well, here in my experience, A plus B plus C equals D. So that's what it should equal in this situation. But 
most other people didn't get A, B, C, and D, right? And, and so we, we, we judge people based on our own experiences, our own history, but often they didn't come from the same background. Yeah. And so, the, you know, we look at a situation, you know, even, uh, you know, as big as racism and go, I didn't experience that. I, I, I've never seen that. So how can that be true? And yet someone else on the other side is going, I experience this every day. And you're telling me that my experience is not valid. Yeah. And it's, and it's like, Oh, how do we get past that? And, you know, how do we start to listen to each other? Uh, you know, on big issues and little issues, because both, I mean, this was a cabin cleanup competition at camp. Like the, the, the big end game was to get to go to supper first. <laughs> like this was not, you know, this was not consequential, but in that moment, it sure felt like it. Yeah. And, and because we figured out through tears, through, through, strife in that relationship uh we have a really good friendship like a lifelong friendship has been developed because we learn to understand each other like you and I are very different you know you walk into a room and you're pastor Jen and you know you have this you know manner about you I walk into a room and I yell something out and I mean I I still remember walking into the church in Verona and yelling jaywags every time I walked in and then one time there was like something important going on and you're like, Shit. but it's like, we're just very different people, but yet we have learned to understand. And then we have grace and compassion for each other's weaknesses because we understand where the person's coming from. Yes. And, and I think if we're talking about lessons from 2020 with all the strife we've seen is how do we get past which camp someone is in and actually get to understand and learn who they are. Because that's what God's calling to us to, right? How many times in the Bible does it talk about not being judgy, right? Lest yes. you be judged, right? Like, you know, when you think about that, like, don't judge lest you be judged. Like, that's a scary statement, right? right. How easy is it for us to judge someone else's sin? But, but do we want our sin to be judged? Right. Like, and, and so how do we learn this lesson in 2020 of, you know, how do we actually take off the judgment, like the glasses of judgment, the lens of judgment and actually approach these difficult conversations? And they can be very difficult, but with grace and compassion for one another, because if we get back to that human level, I think we have a lot of ability to make progress on some of these really big issues. So if we were, I'm a steps person. So I think the first thing is when you're coming into a conversation is, Lord, would you show me in my own heart where I might be judgy, right? Show me where I might have some preconceived ideas or if there's even a previous offense, uh, would you show me where that is so I'm not operating out of that offense or judgment? Secondly, um, spirit of the living God, grant wisdom, right? Yeah. Grant wisdom. So we want, show me where I'm, I have, uh, I might be judgmental, grant wisdom in the conversation. And, and thirdly, help me to listen, yeah. listen, because so often, excuse me, we want to just jump right in rather than sitting back and listening. And, and that's why I think we have to ask for wisdom before we ask for listening. Okay, Lord, give me a mind to, for wisdom and then help me to listen and hear. But then, as you said, you respond with mercy and compassion to someone who has a different view right rather than jumping all over them and and tearing them down because the bible says actually it's your kindness that leads us to repentance right there's something about kindness being extended um a listening ear a non-judgmental platform um and to be extended mercy and grace and compassion right will just lead to um fostering a, a friendship or understanding or just moving you a little bit further down the road in the direction god is calling you well and taking the pressure off like we go into these conversations and almost like i have to change your mind but how many times have you changed your mind because someone else told you to yeah like i'm just stubborn enough i'm never going to do that Right. Like if you tell me I have to think a certain way or change my mind on something, I'm probably not going to do that. But with knowledge, my opinion and perception will change. 
And so if you sharing your opinion can educate me, even if it's just on how you feel about something, I'm far more likely to have my, my ideas changed by that because it's really hard to, to be upset with someone or hate someone if you know them, Mm. right? It's really easy to say terrible things about Donald Trump because how many of us actually know him, right? But, but do you say terrible things about someone, you know, even if you disagree with them, right? Like you and I disagree all the time, but I don't jump from, we have a difference of opinion on this thing to you're an evil person. Because it's really hard. Because I know you. I know your heart. And so even if we just get to hear each other's hearts on these things and and, and not, you know, like it, there's going to be times where we're offended by what someone else's heart is. And in those moments, we got to be really careful to not try to force something there, but allow the Holy Spirit to do the work, to share our opinions and, and let that change. It's a gradual process. I mean, I, I would absolutely feel like I am not a racist person. But that doesn't mean there's not a racist thought subconsciously that have I been taught as I've grown up, you know, whether it's a saying or whether it's just, oh, what someone should do or shouldn't do, right? And, and so we have these different layers that we all have to work through, right? Like if sin was just this one big thing, we wouldn't have a problem with it. We'd stay away from it. But it's all these different layers. And so we need to help each other listen and understand so that we can, you know, continually move towards Jesus and, and work through these things in our life rather than just ignoring them. Right. And so uh, so we're going to just, I want to say, life lesson 2000 or life lesson one 2020 is really listen to me like listen, like be willing to come to the table, listen to me, uh, don't judge, but extend mercy and grace and compassion, right? Be willing to listen, recognize that maybe there is something with yourself that may not be just the other person, but maybe there is something in your own heart that you need to work through so that you're not operating out of that place of judgment, but you're actually operating out of place of grace. Yeah. All right. Well, Pray for us. All right. Lord, I thank you so much that we get the opportunity to have safe conversations, to talk about the things of you. And so, Lord, I pray that you would help each one of us to learn the lessons from 2020 that you're trying to teach us by your Holy Spirit in our hearts. And and for each person, it's going to be a little bit different. But, Lord, I pray that you would give us grace to listen to the people around us grace to show them your love even though they have a different opinion and that we would be able to through that show them who you are and that they would come to a deeper understanding of of who you are and what you've done for them and uh, we just thank you that we can be a part uh, of our communities and give us opportunities even today to share your love with one another in your name we pray amen 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 all right all right dear friends that's it that's all Bye. See you later.